Hey guys, Dr. Cycling on FPV. Uh, what is this going on? There, I think we're good. Yep. And uh, we're getting ready to do an RMA here, so I'm going to go ahead and open this up. Let me just go ahead and get this out for you guys. So, so here's the deal. So I have this sent to you. Actually, it's already open. Um, so a gentleman purchased this back in February. Now, look, we're in April. And I'm going to tell you flat out that anybody who thinks you can buy in February and then, and then return it, like after you've crashed and stuff, like, stop. Okay, so, so, so let, me just, let, me just, let me help you with a few things. Number one, stop telling me you've built quads your whole life, you have a ton of them, you know what you're doing. Don't care. It's, it's probably the worst thing you could do is tell me you know what you're doing. Because that means nothing in terms of could you screw up, okay? So there's not like a warranty for people that build quads and then a warranty for people that don't build quads and then a special warranty for people that have five or more quads and been doing this their whole life. That's asinine. Here's the deal. A warranty is a warranty. You can screw up. I can screw up. We all screw up. Doesn't change the warranty. Okay? So let's stop with all the BS and let's just get down to it. This is what was sent back to me. Okay? Um, and so what I'm told is... Had it since February, only flew it maybe four times. So in two months, you flew it four times maybe, and it caught on fire and fell out of the sky, or fell out of the sky and caught on fire. I don't care, however the order is. So first thing that gets me is the, I know what I'm doing, uh, blah, 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 which again, spare me all that. No offense, but I mean, it means jack crap to me because you could be the best guy in drones. Don't tell me you don't make a mistake, we all do. So that's the worst thing you could do. Just own up to the fact that it might be your problem and you caused it. So anyways, but that being the case, I have to look at this with an open mind and that's what I'm gonna do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at it together. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at it together under the microscope, okay? To see exactly what the hell is going on. So we're under the microscope right now. Let me focus this a little bit because we're gonna lay this flat. So let's see if we can focus and we'll try to turn down the light in here. There, that'll help a little bit. All right, so let's look at what we've got so far. First, let's look at the soldering, okay? Um, solderings wonky. I'm just gonna call it like I see it. I think your soldering's pretty wonky. Um, I'm not really sure if that's touching, but you know what? I say we do a continuity test just to see. Okay. And so let's do that first. Now I don't know. But maybe it's not. Okay. Okay. Looks like it's not touching. That that's just kind of dragged over here. So that's good. At least we don't have a problem there. But I mean, this doesn't, this doesn't screen. Now, now the argument would be, oh, hey man, I was taking it off. Well, tell you what, um, here's a few things. Let me bring this down a little bit so you can see a little bit more of what I'm looking at, okay? So here's what I can tell you. I can tell you that you've got solder splatter sitting here, 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 okay? That's just a start. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not from the factory. I can tell you that because I work on these boards all the time. Um, I'm not really sure how you take your solder off or when you desolder this, but just for the sake of actually trying to make it look like you care, try to be clean when you do this, okay? Now we're gonna keep looking, oh my God, let's look at this. Let's look at this big clump of awesomeness right here. All right, so we have our ground and a positive. I mean, no matter, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, um, even though, uh, even though it's kind of nasty, I guess. I don't know why this box just appeared. Let me get rid of it. There we go. Um, can't say that there's a problem there, really. Uh, I don't know why people don't shield the positive in the ground on a capacitor. I, I mean, I, I don't know if I really like that idea because all it would take is a twist or a turn or a lean and it would short. But hey, that's not why this is here. So let's just zoom back out and keep looking. See what we find, okay? Let's keep going down, all right, okay, okay. Looking for more fun stuff here. Um, yeah, 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 what, what, oh, what is that? Oh, that's okay, okay, all right. Keep going, keep going, uh, oof, man. So this is where the problem seems to be uh, so let's zoom down into here. Okay, let's see what the heck we're really looking at. Okay, so, so, wow. Well, not really sure what would have caused that. I mean, it definitely looks like it overheated. 
Now, I can tell you that this can happen from um, putting too much, running too much amperage through and heating up your ESC quite a bit. Let's just kind of try to clean this off. Okay, I know somewhere under here I can read it. And again here, maybe. So, let's try to lighten it. Okay. All right. So let's turn that down. Clearly, we had some heating issues here. Oh, look at that. We can just turn these. That's awesome. That's just total. Oh, yeah. That's great. Great, great, great. Oh, that's cooked. All right. What about this one? No, that one's on there pretty good. All right, that looks great. Let's turn it over. Okay, so here's the reverse side of that same area. We just got stuff missing all over the place here. Now, what is this here? Because that's, when you take a thing off, there's no remnants of solder usually left under here. We have a ball of solder left under here. What is this? Yeah, I'm not so sure. I, I, I'll be honest with you, I'm not convinced on that one. Let me look at this pad again. Okay. Now let's look at it from here. Ah, here's your spot. Okay. So here's where the damage happened, it looks like. This is where there was probably a point of contact. And that looks like it cooked. I mean, it literally just cooked. Okay. My guess is that, let me see, one, two, one. There was contact made here. And by looking at this solder spot here, I'm gonna to have to stick with that for now. I just, I think that that's really what this is. Um, but let's just check the rest of this out, okay? All right, wait, what is this? Oh my goodness, I didn't even know. It. Oh, that's mine, okay. Ooh. So what happened there? Uh-oh, that flew off. Let's put that back, sorry guys, I just had this. Where'd it go? There it is. So this came off right right here okay but that doesn't explain this here so flip it over we got ourselves our burned area right about here I'm not really sure again why there's a solder spot here it shouldn't be Okay, let's continue. Now, this is something that's interesting to me. Let's turn down the light in here and see if we can get this focused. I have some more solder splatter right here. Right about here. Okay. Uh, just this is more of a cosmetic thing here to point out. Um, so be really cautious about that, especially with the soldering. Um, the other thing that really does concern me is that the solder seems to, and I'm gonna hold this up like this and see, but I'm trying to see if that solder actually, it does pass the top of the board. It is actually the longest piece, or it is the piece that would touch first if this board was compressed, and you can see what I'm talking about is, here's the top of the solder, and here's the nearest component. The solder extends past the component, so this could touch the frame, I guess. I'm not sure if that's even an issue here, but I'm just pointing out why you don't want to put that much solder on. Okay, so let's see what else. Uh, what the heck? Oh my God, I mean, look how much solder splatter is on here. Sir, I mean, you can't do this, okay? Because, 
these are the kind of things that can come into look here. Let me let me focus. It's a little bit more. All right. I mean that's just not necessary to do that. And and now I'm going to check something here just because I'm curious. So bear with me a second. I want to do a continuity test here. All right. So let's. Okay, so, so here's what I'm going to look at, right? At the end of the day, what's got my attention is basically this area here and what the heck happened, whether it's an overheating issue or you shorted it out or what, right? So we could clean that up a little bit. But the other part that bothers me is right here. So... What I can tell you is that most of the time, and I say most because I haven't seen an issue where it hasn't happened. What the heck is all this crap? Okay, so most of the time, we're just scraping away the layer of the PCB here. Most of the time, you will not have a ball of solder here because you can't put that chip down. That almost looks like somebody tried to re-solder it let me clean that up a bit. Hold on. Okay, but when a, when a, well, let me just put it like this. If any of you have ever tried to solder one of these back on, you'll know that if you try to put solder underneath it, you're going to end up with this unleveled piece. Now, I just had one come off here, so let me kind of give you an idea. Let me give you an explanation of how this works, right? So let's just say, and I'm not worried about orientation right now as much as I am just to try to show you guys. <coughs> Let's say you put this chip on here. Just it doesn't matter how, but just like that. Okay. What you can't see is that this chip is now going to rock back and forth. Okay. It, you could push it down, and it's going to rock back and forth because there is a solder blob right in the middle, right there. Okay. That cannot exist. Okay. And that does not exist from the factory. Now, does it rock back and forth? Yes. It'll constantly rock back and forth. Okay, so what I can tell you is that piece is not from the factory. That's either somebody trying to fix it uh, or what have you, um, but no. So anyways, so at the end of the day, um, <laughs> do I think the board is to blame? No, I think the soldering is probably to blame a little bit. I think either you may have overheated this board um, and that doesn't just come from just, oh, hey, I'm flying. I'm, no, that comes from an abuse uh, an aspect of either putting in too much, um, too much ample, exceeding what it can do, uh, or crashing and not cutting, or trying to get out of a tree and just letting the props keep spinning and digging, uh, you know, extending your amps or uh, making the amps the amp uh, draw uh, go beyond normal, which will overheat. And yeah, oh yeah, you can catch an ESC on fire if you do that. Um, but do I think this is a fault of the equipment? Absolutely not. Um, nothing here tells me the equipment is at fault, but the soldering does tell me that um, I think it's the end user at fault. Uh, and, and to be honest with you, um, I, the other thing about this is I work on these boards probably more than any other board because we sold so many, we sold thousands of them to the schools. So I'm very familiar with this board and this board does not do that. Um, it's a very docile, very good board if you treat it properly. But the problem is people try to put these on like bigger quads and the amp draw is just too much. And then they put a massive battery and it's just way too much. So um, I regret to tell you that no, number one, not only you're out of warranty time period anyway, because three months or two and a half months is beyond, but um, this is a result of, of some bad, uh, something bad that happened between the pilot and the drone uh, and not between the equipment itself. So the answer is no, uh, that is not something that's gonna be covered. Number one, because you're out of warranty. So don't, don't even act like, Hey, two months after flying, I have warranty of three months. No, you don't. Uh, number two, your soldering skills need some, some uh, a little bit of improvement there, uh, and you need to like take better care to uh, make sure that your soldering is on point. Stop with all the solder spots that you can see on uh, different caps there. 
um, that's a bad sign and that's the first thing I look for because what happens is a little bit of that solder can get on something else and next thing you know you've shorted it out but you don't know that um, and next thing you know you think the equipment's bad but it's not all right guys that's it so that is a no on this RMA uh, and we'll get started on the next one if you have any questions let me know as always please subscribe to our YouTube channel I appreciate your support uh, and again I'm not here to upset anybody but I'm here to tell the truth on it and there's no way that that is at fault of the ESC or the I mean of the AIO flight controller at all at all at all and I know that that solder point on that where that MOSFET came off I know that is not from the factory because that MOSFET couldn't have fit on there then if it was so um, there's something that happened there that I'm not being told about but uh, so that's a no there and uh, if you hate me for it sorry but that's the way it goes and uh, other than that guys God bless be safe and have fun we will see you soon peace